The Topaz Labs Denoise AI program. What's it like and how do you use it? Or importantly, is it actually worth buying? Find out next. Just a little heads up before I start this video, Topaz Labs aren't sponsoring me in any way. In fact, I bought this program with my own money just a few months ago while it was on special. So after using it, I thought I'd share my opinion on it. You can use Topaz Labs Denoise AI as a standalone program, but I like to use it as a plugin for Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. I like to do all my adjustments firstly in those programs, then I send the images to Topaz Denoise AI to finish them off. Okay, so let's rip into it on my laptop here where I've got a couple of examples that I took doing both landscape and bird photography. So when we use higher ISOs in photography, we get a thing called noise or digital noise in our shots. Kind of looks like your photo has been etched onto sandpaper. Everything can look really grainy or soft in some circumstances and it ruins what could potentially be an amazing shot. Let's start off with a landscape photography shot. This shot I took in Iceland at a place called Godafoss Waterfall. This is actually the first time that I got to see the Northern Lights and it blew my mind. I took this with a Nikon D810 camera. I had my 14 to 24 uh, f2.8 lens. Um, I had it at f2.8. I was sitting at um, 18 millimeters and the ISO was at two and a half thousand. So the ISO was a little bit high. I've already made some slight adjustments to this image and got it to roughly where I like it. But if you look at the full screen of this, let me just go to full screen for you. If we zoom in to parts of this image, you can just see how grainy it is, especially up in the corners there. I mean, look at that. That's really bad. Like I said, it looks like it's been etched into sandpaper. It really is a problem. But this is where this program, this Denoise AI program comes into play. So what I'm gonna do is just come up to filter and I'm gonna send it via the plugin to Topaz Denoise AI. So it opens it up and automatically it starts working. What I've done is I've got it set up where there's a split screen type situation where I've got the original on the left and on the right hand side, it's telling me what it's doing. In this case, it's just going through its motions and already we can see there is such a dramatic difference. Just like that, it gets rid of the noise. Let me just take you through the program very, very quickly. Down the right hand side, you've got your different types of modes of denoise that you can use. You've got standard, clear, low light and severe noise. Down under model preferences, you can mess around with those little sliders. You can remove noise. It depends on how much of the noise you really want to remove. I just want to mention here too, that next to model preferences at any stage, if you want the AI program to do absolutely everything for you, if you just click this slider next to here, the program will then look at your image and judge what needs to be done to it in terms of removing noise and enhancing the sharpness. So yeah, if it's all getting a bit too much for you, just let the program do it for you. But I like to have a little bit of manual control over my images, so I just select that off and then I use the sliders manually underneath. Underneath post-processing with these sliders, you've got recover original detail and color noise reduction. I'm just gonna lift that color noise reduction up just a little tiny bit, something like about eight and recover original detail. I'm actually gonna drop that down a bit to about 18. So the denoise type I'm using is called standard. So it's just having to think, it's going through the process, looking through the image. All right, that's looking pretty darn good. You can see the dramatic difference from the left-hand side to the right. I absolutely love technology nowadays, just the way it can just go through that image and say, yep, I'm just gonna get rid of all that noise for you. At the top of the program, you can click on original and that'll just drop it back to the original on the right hand side, but I don't think you really need that because if you've got it in split screen, um, you've always got that on the left. I think you only use that original because up the top here, you've got a thing called single view. What that does in single view is give you the whole look, getting rid of all the noise over the complete image. So that's when you'd probably be wanting to use that original and then letting it go and then having a look at the noise reduction thing. Up the top next to that single view, you've got split view. So with the split view, it'll pick a section of your frame, which you can see up on the top right hand corner, and it splits that little section. So you've got one bit of your frame on the left hand side 
and your other bit of the frame on the right hand side. Next to split view, you've also got the side by side view. Now this is the one I really like to use most. I'd rather have that where I can see what's happening from the original and then I can see what's happening over onto the denoised section. Next to that, we've got the comparison view. So if you click on that, what the actual program does is it gives you the four different types of denoise and that's standard, clear, low light and severe noise. So it actually gives you all four options on screen and I guess that's really good because you can pick which one that you like the most. So standard looks okay. Clear, I'm happy with clear. Now it's doing the low light version. Yeah, low light looks really good. And now it's just doing the severe noise section down the bottom right pane. With the comparison view where I'm looking at all four, out of those for me, I actually like the low light version. So I'm just gonna go over here on the right hand side and click on low light. And then I'm gonna go back to my split screen version. So under model preferences, I've got the ability to move these sliders in terms of remove noise and enhance sharpness. I'm actually just gonna drop that remove noise back a little bit, something like about 35. With the sharpness too, I'm not gonna increase the sharpness that much. I'm just gonna drop that down to something like 15. Under the post-processing, we've got the sliders of recover original detail and color noise reduction. I'm just gonna move that color noise reduction to something like about five. And recover original detail, I'm just gonna leave that at 20. And let's see what it does. Modern technology, you can just sit back, relax, and watch it do it all for you. Look at that. I mean, look at the difference between the sky, the mountain, and the waterfall. Let's go and check out that top corner where all that noise was. Oh man. I mean, look at the difference of that. Look at the left and look at the right. That's incredible. I mean, really, let's just go over to here in the darks. Like you can see it's all grainy in the darks here. Look at the left and then look at the right hand side. That is just crazy. Now, one thing I should have mentioned is up the top, you've got the ability to zoom into, well, you can either have it fit to screen, you can zoom into 50%, zoom into 100%, that's what I normally use. You can go right into 400% if you need to. So I'm pretty happy with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that back out to Photoshop. All you've gotta do is hit apply. Okay, so here it is back in Photoshop once it's come out of the Topaz Denoise AI program. Let's go to full screen and have a look around it. Already, I can see such an amazing difference. Look at that water, much better. And even up in those purple patches of the Aurora, like the noise in those sections, in those dark, I mean, look at that. That is just beautiful and clear even up in the corners. Let's just go and have a look at those corners. That is such an amazing difference. So that's how you can use it for landscape photography situations. I guess you could use that for things like long exposures where you've got a bit of noise as well. Also other astrophotography. I know a lot of astrophotographers shoot a lot of different styles. The way they get rid of noise, they do a lot of layering as well as star tracking and everything like that. But I think with this denoise program, that could save you quite a lot of grief when you're doing Milky Way photography as well. All right, so moving right along, let's now try this bird photography shot. This is a shot of a double barred finch. I took this with the Nikon Z50 with my 80 to 400 millimeter lens. Now, the problem with this little guy, I had to literally thread the needle in terms of focus and getting him right through this little type of dense bush now these guys move around at 100 miles an hour. So I had to use a higher shutter speed. So I think the settings on this shot were um, ISO 6400 at 7.1, 1 2500th of a second. This guy was in a really dark patch in this tree. So let's just go to full screen. And if we zoom in around that, you can see how grainy it is on those dark patches of your images. So let's just send that on over to Topaz Labs via the plugin. Now for this image, I'm actually gonna use standard and I think this will really blow your mind in terms of what it does. So the program's just going through the image and calculating what it needs to do to get rid of all the noise. Look at that. 
Look at the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. That is just incredible. It really does such an amazing job. What I'm gonna do is I'm pretty happy with all those sliders and the positions they're in. Actually, I might just enhance the sharpness a little tiny bit more. Remove noise just a little tiny bit more. Look at the difference between the left-hand side and the right. That is just chalk and cheese. So let's just go on ahead and hit apply and that'll go back to Photoshop. Just while this is processing and sending it back to Photoshop, you're actually gonna see this image in next week's video uh, where I take the Nikon Z50 doing some bird photography out for a second time. And the second time I was actually a little bit more successful than the first time. So keep your eyes open for that video. Okay, so this is our image back in Photoshop. Let's go to the full screen version of it. Just look at the difference that has made to that image compared to where we started from, where it was really, really grainy. I mean, the fact that I used a 6400 ISO on this and the picture was so grainy to begin with, having that denoise AI program really is fantastic. Is it worth getting? Well, I definitely think so. It saves me a heap of time in post. And as you can see from these examples, the AI does a pretty amazing job. Well, thank you so much for watching. Never stop creating. And I'll see you next time.